Five Nights at Freddy's is one of the most iconic game series to come out in recent memory. Too bad the game's story is not good. Now I know, I know, FNAF is famous for its cryptic and subtle form of storytelling, and most of the time, it's only so bare bones in service of the gameplay. However, the story is so unnecessarily convoluted that even its most diehard fans are still in a heated debate of what the timeline even is. As someone who's played one of the games, and watched all the let's plays so you know I'm an expert, the story is so batshit insane that I can't help but love how dumb the story continues to get. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and explain the PNAF lore and why it makes no sense. First, let's lay out some basic ground rules so I don't bore you with all the minute details of the lore, because there's a lot. If you want a more comprehensive look into the lore, Check out these videos, who do a way better job at piecing the story together. 1. We will be talking about the story from release order, so we'll start from the first game and end in the latest game. 2. We will be skipping FNAF World and the book series, even though both have important story beats since I feel the story mostly stands on its own. 3. We will only be talking about things that are confirmed, so I won't dabble too much on the theory side of the games, because that is a whole other can of worms. And 4. This is all just my opinion. If you enjoy the story for what it is, then good on ya, I do as well. Without further ado, let's get to the games. You play as a night guard, tasked with looking after the Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria. You are given messages over the phone by a guy named Phone Guy. Since the creator never got around to giving that particular character a real name, he tells you that everything is fine and to be sure to follow these very crucial steps or else animatronics will jump scare you and kill you, just like a job in real life. Apparently, the animatronics like to roam around at night and if they spot you, they attack you and stuff you inside an empty animatronic suit. You survive the night and return for some reason to continue to learn about the pizzeria's past as well as an incident of the Bite of 87 in which one of the animatronics bit of the customer's frontal lobe. There are also hidden newspaper clippings that hint at the disappearance of five children as well as complaints from customers that the animatronics have a foul odor as well as spewing what seems to be bodily fluid. During one of the nights, the phone guy is killed but still found the time to record messages for you which makes him employee of the month. You survive into the fifth night, get your paycheck, and then the game ends. The first game, besides being cryptic, does the best job at telling a story. It may be bare bones, but it tells just enough to get the player intrigued as to what's going on and wanting to find out what really happened. The game also has a surprising amount of secrets that only make the game more intriguing such as a secret fifth animatronic that only appears rarely and is never mentioned in-game. The idea of a haunted pizzeria where animatronics want to kill you is a simple but great concept to base a series on. I mean, just look at these characters. They're all well-designed and give off this simple but really creepy demeanor about them. It's no wonder that they became so famous after this game came out. It's only a shame that the story gets more complicated from here. You are now a new night guard on the grand reopening of the new Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria, filled to the brim with animatronics, both new and old. You are once again told what to do by the returning phone guy, which is a little suspicious, but don't pay too much attention to it. Much like the first game, he helps you on how to survive the night, as well as talking about some story threads here and there. You are also given more story in the form of cryptic minigames that hint at the fact that the animatronics are haunted by the spirits of the dead, missing children, as well as hinting at who the killer might have been, being this fellow over here, dubbed the purple guy, as well as hinting that he may have been a security guard himself, explaining why the animatronics are attacking security guards in particular. In a plot twist, the game is revealed to be a prequel, since the game not only takes place in 1987, but also heavily hints to the infamous bite incident. The pizzeria then closes down, but you mysteriously return to get more money, I guess. Once again, the story does a decent job at expanding the lore, but it's starting to get a little out there, especially with some of the newer animatronics apparently being equipped with state-of-the-art technology that makes them aggressive towards anybody with a criminal record, which is not a bad idea in the slightest. The atmosphere also isn't as creepy as the first game, since it feels like you're constantly being attacked by all 10, yes, 10, animatronics this time around. Either way, this game was a huge hit and really started to get a lot of people invested in the lore. Let's see how the next game tops this one. The series then throws us 30 years into the future, 
in which the pizzeria had been turned into a haunted attraction due to its grisly past, which isn't a bad idea in the slightest. This time around, there's only one animatronic to worry about, but this place is also, surprise surprise, haunted by the spirits of the past animatronics. You also happen to be the night guard for this attraction, and are forced to stay overnight for some reason, and it doesn't honestly make that much sense, but whatever, it's tradition at this point. This time around, you are told the story through a new phone guy, Hey, hey, glad you came back for another night. Who is then quickly replaced by the phone guy from the previous game, but don't worry, he's still dead. Apparently, there used to be these animatronic slash suit hybrids that employees used to wear for birthdays on occasion. The suits also have a very small problem of killing you if you so much as drop any amount of moisture or water on them. So you know, nothing too bad. In some of the other minigames, it shows that the purple guy went back to the pizzeria to dismantle the old haunted animatronics. This causes the spirits of the dead children to materialize before him, which scares him so badly that he jumps into one of the old suits, which then quickly malfunctions, leaving him bleeding to death on the floor. I don't know what he was trying to accomplish. He then comes back to life as the vengeful furry known as Springtrap, which also happens to be the main animatronic hunting you down. You survive the nights and keep coming back for some reason to release the souls of the dead children through playing these optional minigames, and then the place burns down, presumably killing Springtrap. The story for this one honestly is interesting and it was a cool way to wrap up the plot from the previous games, even if this game was really wonky in telling the story. It honestly did feel a bit rushed since it had the least realized mechanics of any of the games. It also doesn't help that this game didn't feel as scary as much as it was annoying. I'm serious, this game will piss you off more than it will scare you since it feels like the mechanics don't work half of the time. Also side ramp, but I always hated that you could barely tell what was going on in the monitors. Like seriously, I can't tell what the f I'm looking at half of the time. Like it's really staticky, it's really hard to tell in an already deteriorating green area that is just not pleasant to look at. Also, how was purple guy stuck in a suit for all these years and nobody noticed that there was a decaying corpse inside the suits? That's kind of dumb, but whatever. This this game was a bit of a disappointment for a multitude of reasons, so not wanting to end the series on such a low note, Scott decided to step up his game and end the series on a bang. This game finally answers the long awaited mystery of the infamous spy incident. You play as a child, having reoccurring nightmares about the animatronics, because honestly who wouldn't, it must survive the night. It tells the story of this child, who honestly can't catch a break. He is bullied by his brother relentlessly, he gets locked inside his room by his parents, and the backstage closet for good measure, and is also killed by one of the animatronics after his brother puts him in the mouth of it, malfunctioning and killing him instantly, thus answering the mystery of the Bite of 83. Wait, the Bite of 83? Yes, there was another Bite incident separate from the Bite of 87 that, spoiler alert, at this point still doesn't have a conclusive answer. This baffled me quite a bit honestly because it could have been such a nice ending to the series, answering all the loose threads to the story, but nope. Instead, this game opens up a whole new can of worms that only starts to derail the story even more. Seriously, this game doesn't even help matters either since it's the most cryptic and vague of them all, which is something I didn't even think was possible. Presumably, everything we are experiencing in the game are hallucinations of the kid who is either dying in the hospital since there are hints that there is hospital equipment in his room, or maybe there are just reoccurring nightmares from the kid who's scared of these animatronics. Also, this game has one of the most vague and cryptic endings, ending with this screen right here, which also has never been solved because I think the creator didn't really have a straight answer for it. This game is also the scariest game by proxy because it forces you to have the volume really high in order to survive the night, which is just cruel. It's the equivalent of one of those jump scare videos that forces you to have your volume really high in order to hear like a vague message or something. You know what I'm talking about. Changing the setting from a pizzeria to a house makes this game that more scary because it feels like you're never really safe. I mean seriously, having to go up super close in order to close the doors on your threats is a lot scarier than having to shut the door on them. Besides that, the story was way more complicated than it needs to be by this point. Why add two separate bite incidents? So there was two bite incidents and even more children disappearing because the purple guy was still at large and no one was able to figure out who did it? I know the books give an explanation to it, but in this story so far, it really gives us nothing other than just very, very vague hints. This was such a weird detail to put in the lore, and I'm sorry to say that it will only make less sense from here. The series as a whole has really started to go off the rails, so this game makes the brilliant choice of further complicating the lore by adding a whole slew of new characters, 
and by this point, I'm a ride or die fan of this series. This shit is so stupid and missy that I can't help but love how dumb it continues to get. We are introduced to the Afton family, whose father happens to be one of the creators of the animatronics, and we are now in this other, 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 other location separate from the pizzeria that is also filled with killer animatronics possessed by the souls of another group of dead children, who are stored on the ground for reasons, and they need to be looked after for reasons. And then there's a clown, and the clown convinces you to off yourself so it can become you, and then you become an animatronic until your body decomposes and dies, but then you don't die because you're immortal or something. See what I mean? We've come a long way from relatively simple premise, but we're not done yet. The game also shows us how the daughter of the Afton family is killed by the clown and how now she possesses it. The animatronics of this location also combine together like a Voltron and become Ennard. Also you reveal to be playing as the son of the purple guy, what a twist. Also you, you vow to come after Springtrap who is also the purple guy mind you, who is also revealed to be alive and is also revealed to be your father cause why not add more to the drama. And on top of all that, the purple guy was the creator of the animatronics because of course he is. By this point the series has truly gone off the Rails, the series has become a sci-fi extravaganza. How was the purple guy able to make these extremely advanced animatronics that have sentience and are also way more advanced than any of the previous robots, but is still set in the 80s? How did you come back to life? Why are the monitors in the room from FNAF 4 hidden in this game? Why is there a secret basement filled with these guys that are apparently for rental services even profitable? I could get behind a creepy pizzeria with creepy animatronics, but this is where stuff begins to make even less sense. It also doesn't help that this series refuses to give any real answers to the questions being asked. It's much like Lost in that way, where the writers want to have a grand mystery, but never really truly had an answer as to why or how anything works. Which is really when FNAF which is really when the FNAF lore as a whole started to fall apart. Scott continuously adds more and more to the story to these games, but refuses to elaborate on any of it, making everything feel like it was thrown together, because it was most likely thrown all together at the last minute. Either way, let's see where the next game takes us. This game has you open up and create your own pizzeria chain, which is actually a cool departure from the status quo, but don't worry, you still have to survive the night because of course you do. You are also secretly tasked with collecting all the animatronics from the past for mysterious reasons, including the return of Springtrap, who looks considerably stupider than he did before. This game is by far the biggest lore dump out of any of the previous games, and get this, things only get more convoluted from here, who would have guessed? It is revealed that you are playing as the protagonist from the last game, who now also looks like this, mind you, who is also revealed to be this asshole brother who killed his younger brother from FNAF 4 because murder runs in the family. It is also revealed that you were hired in secret by another person who also helped create the animatronics, who has a name but I'm too lazy to look it up, to burn the place down so they could put the souls of the animatronics to rest even though they were already put to rest at the end of the third game, but whatever. Springtrap is also sent to the Shadow Dimension, and his name is William Afton, but I don't remember if it was revealed in this game or in the last game, so let's just say it was this game. There's way more lore dumped into this game, such as how we see the first child killed by Springtrap and a cryptic minigame that hints at something. I'm not sure what it is, but, I, but I'm sure it's maybe something to do with William, who cares? As well as some secrets as to why the animatronics are possessed in the first place. By this point in the series, the games have gone from being creepy to becoming goosebumps, since the series started to really cater towards its younger audience. The game still has disturbing stuff in it, but most of the animatronics now have voices. which was introduced in the last game, but that game also suffers from the animatronics simply not being scary anymore. It's also too bad that they were never really the focus of the story, and are set aside to the Afton family, who were retconned into the series to make the story have more unnecessary layers that really didn't need to be there in the first place. This game does feel like a love letter to the fans, since it does answer a lot of questions, but in the process, also leaves some questions unanswered. Now, this may seem like the ultimate conclusion to the series. Everyone is either dead, or is close to being dead. All loose story threads were mostly closed, and there is no more story to tell. This is the bonus game, in which you play as Willy and Afton in Super Hell, being killed over and over by all the animatronics which is honestly a super cool concept. There is a bit more lore here and there, but honestly it doesn't really matter since none of this makes that much sense unless you watch all the game theories on how the lore actually does make sense and was totally not made up on a game by game basis. This game is honestly a mess in my opinion. Most of the scares in this game are literally just JPEGs shaking violently at the screen. This game is really just fan service with some hints of lore sprinkled in. Either way, this game was 
just kind of a nice send out to the series, you know, a bonus game. We're finally done with the series, there's nothing else left to be told and all story threads have been closed. This is a strange one. Apparently, the Fazbear Corporation were not too happy about the rumors of children going missing in their pizzerias. So they decided to make a VR game that would clear the name up, but in the process, they somehow made it so the animatronics would still kill you and be quite creepy and disgusting. Don't think about it too much because it makes even less sense the more you think about it. You play as a beta tester, testing out the game for the company. As you progress through the game, you learn that William's virtual soul is in the game code and somehow manages to possess you, which means that the killer is back once again. Now, you may think to yourself, how can someone's soul be stored inside a video game made years after the fact that person has already died? And the answer to that is that they wanted to find a reason to continue this game series. And money. Lots and lots of money. I'm still trying to comprehend how a person from the 80s can make a virtual copy of himself and also make sentient animatronics that can steal other people's souls for good measure. It's honestly a little far-fetched. And I'm aware that this series has haunted animatronics, but it gets a little dumb when they try to explain it. This game is scary, but it's in VR, and it would be pretty hard not to make this premise scary at all. The story has lost the plot, because it thought that the most interesting part of the story was the humans, and not the cool animatronics that everyone actually cares about. How much more convoluted can this get? Oh boy, where do I even begin? You play as a boy named Gregory who is stuck in the brand new Freddy Fazbear Mega Pizza Mall place, whatever. It has a name, but I'm not looking it up. You are accompanied by Freddy as he helps you survive the night against the other animatronics as well as trying to avoid being caught by the security guard, who feels a little suspicious. This honestly is a cool concept for the series, and in the first, you can move around in an open environment. What could possibly go wrong? It is revealed that the security guard is actually the game tester who was possessed by the virtual soul of the bad guy from the last game. She has tampered with the other animatronics which is why they are also acting aggressive and going after you in particular. As you explore more, you eventually discover many secrets, including that the pizzeria you built in the Pizzeria Simulator game is hidden deep underground, finding the melted remains of the old animatronics. Good to see their souls are put to rest. It is also revealed that William is still in alive. Wait, so you're telling me that we made a whole ass game to make a new villain only for them to be sidelined by the same villain who has died three times in a row by this point and expect people to still care of the fate of these characters if they just keep coming back anyways. Not only that, but you don't even defeat the killer. He just walks and they gets presumably killed by again in a cutscene by the amalgamation of the other robots. Then you are revealed to be just some kid, and the reason Freddy is protecting you is because it was cut from the game. No, I'm serious. The explanation as to why Freddy swears to be your protector is cut from the game entirely because we needed more room for security bots. This game is a mess in many aspects, but I'm only going to focus on the story and what little it has to tell, which is very shocking considering it's the longest game in the franchise by far. All you really do is dispose of the animatronics and get one of the many lackluster endings that don't add up too much in the grand scheme of things. You don't even face the security guard villain, unless you go out of your way to find them. Even the theory side of the community is struggling with this game because there's so little of substance to this game. Things are either contradicted from the previous games or are not developed enough to make the story have some meaning. In one of the endings, there appears to be two security guards. Like, what are we supposed to make of that? In another ending, you help the security guard be freed from William's control and get ice cream. What a fulfilling reward. This game is also by far the least scary of any of these games. It has a crap ton of jump scare, but those wear off fast since you're constantly being bombarded all the time that it loses all effect. This game was a huge disappointment for many, myself included. It really does feel like this game doesn't have a clear focus, and as a result, this game feels bloated and overwhelming. Honestly, I can rant on the game series more, but then we will be here all day. And I only really want to talk about its lore. Many people are still invested in the story, and I understand why. The idea of killer animatronics is cool, but as the series went on, it struggled to make itself make sense, and it's a shame that the games at this point are starting to recycle its ideas. There's only so much you could do with the concept, you know? I do think that Scott's main focus has always been the gameplay, and the story has always come second which is why the story does feel like it doesn't fully come together half the time. The story is such a small focus that he decided to leave actual important story beats in the book series that are supposedly not connected to the game series, but do heavily inspire the game's story, such as William first being explored in the books. Even though I've been ragging on the story, I still really do enjoy its concept, even on how dumb it's gotten. This is my guilty pleasure for a multitude of reasons, and I'll still rewatch all of Markiplier's playthroughs of the series because I find them so entertaining. 
I just wanted to show my appreciation for the series because it's given me so much joy over the years. I do get excited whenever a new game gets announced because it only means that the story will continue to get even more complicated and I cannot wait for that new update for Security Breach to come out because it only almost guarantees that the story will make even less sense. Also, I can't wait for that movie to eventually come out. It's gonna come out, right?